Hello, I am Bentham. Welcome back to Factorial Railworld. In the previous episode, we were working on the Copper Outpost. Copper Outpost 2 ran out, and Copper Outpost 1 is getting pretty close. So today we're going to build a new outpost, and you can see there the deposit that we're going to build it on. Um, so we'll go over to our to the stations, and we'll grab our rail supplies. We only just put those away because we weren't thinking, but we'll just grab those again. And we also go over to the um, the resupply train, grab a bit of um, of rails from there, until I realise that actually I'm not going to be building that many rails with this particular outpost. Um, so I'll put some back and then we'll go over and get on board a train. I also check up on um, the one remaining copper train we have, copper train 1. It seems to be quite um, well supplied actually, but it's a good idea to have two outposts if we can. So what I'll do is hop on board the spare train, or one of the two, and send it over to Iron Outpost 2.1. And then we'll go from there. So um, it takes a bit of a, of a time to get up here of course. And then once we park up we'll switch to manual driving and make our way over here just a little bit. Um, to this uh, little copper deposit here. It's not particularly big really and we'll probably, we're will we gonna um, have the whole thing being mined in one go from the start. Um, so we may, it may not be a long time before we have to build yet another outpost. It does seem to be something that's happening at the moment. There's like the iron outpost we've had forever and the copper outpost not so much. So anyway you can see here I'm trying to reverse into this um, is this uh, this little siding I'm building and there was a little bit of an issue where I just couldn't steer into it. I didn't know what was going on. Um, but for some reason the steering was inverted. I had to steer um, as if I was turning right in order to reverse to the left, which is a weird thing that happens sometimes, but I don't think it happens all the time, which makes it particularly awkward to maneuver trains sometimes. Um, I'm not sure what the, the thing is there. But anyway, we get the, um, the other end of it connected up, and we'll work out where to put our signals. Uh, we want to make sure that we have the, the siding in a separate block, and also make sure that that block isn't nested in, inside another block as I had a bit of an issue with that um, a little bit back though it only becomes a, a real problem if you have two trains using the same station or something like that but anyway we'll clear away a couple of trees around the place um, it's a bit dark at the moment but you'll just have to sort of deal with it for now the other sun's rising so it's fine um, so we park up the train and I've called this one Copper Outpost 4 even though Copper Outpost 2 is gone and we could um, use that name for it. Um, that was my plan, but then I realised that I'd never deconstructed the station for a copper outpost too. So if I gave, the, if I told the train to go to that outpost, then it would end up um, like alternating between the two possibly, or maybe even just going to the other one because it would be nearer to where it's, um, or to, to copper two where it's going to be unloading. So anyway, we start putting in our mining drills now. I'm just working out the spacing for it. It works out a bit weirdly in the end because um, in order to try and get an even coverage and not sort of waste um, mining drills too much end up with a, a, a gap of two between each um, like two, the the, uh, the mining drills feeding into two sides of a belt but then I end up with a lot of gaps of one between the mining drills next to each other so it sort of works out a bit backwards and maybe I should have had the uh, uh, the columns going horizontally instead of vertically but it's done now so I'll put in uh, some modules. We don't actually have enough to um, supply them all, that was something I didn't really think through, I should probably have resupplied um, on the uh, on the the efficiency modules before um, I set up on this mission because of course you use quite a lot of them when you're putting three into each mining drill so we connect up some of them um, enough to to get things going and then we'll work out how we're going to connect up the the belt so we'll have it going from there we've got a splitter um, that splits everything between the two cargo wagons um, and that should work fine um, it doesn't need to be particularly cleverly set up because it's not that much of a supply there's only a few uh, mining drills in the end. Um, but I, I decide to do a little bit of tweaking, basically things line up um, in such a way that if I sidestep things by one, everything's a lot neater, and I like things to stay neat. Um, maybe I like it a bit too much, because really there was no point in doing that, but I did it anyway, got it evened out. And then we'll sort out the power supply, so first of all we'll need some pylons, and at the moment you can't see anything since it's gone dark again. Um, I do put on the, the power suit later for the dark bits, so you can actually see what's going on. So uh, we'll put in pylon there, and then we'll um, try and get that connected up to a... Um, a substation, there's not quite enough distance, but we can stick in a, another pile in there to connect that up nicely. And this, the substation covers nearly the entire deposit. There's just uh, five that aren't covered, so we'll just use some normal little power poles for that, because it seems a bit wasteful to use, like, two more um, of the uh, of the substations for that, especially when there's not that much room because of how we set things up. But anyway, we've got um, the copper being loaded now. You can see the belt's nice and full at the moment and we'll tell the train what to do. So it's going to spend 30 seconds in Copper Outpost 4, and then it's going to spend 15 seconds in Copper 2, because of course Copper 2 has twice the unloading rate um, that all my outposts have uh, loading rates. So anyway, it sets off this way, which surprised me actually. I thought it was going to go the other way, because it's only just by um, Iron Outpost 2, and of course the trains from there go straight down. 
but it decides to go to the side first, which is interesting. Um, so we get some loaded there, and we'll go over and resupply. We need some more um, efficiency modules and such. So we'll make our way over there. All the bots trying to resupply, but they all run out of power before they get to me and end up taking ages to arrive. I, I wish there was a, a way you could fix that if there was like more battery capacity you could put in, but unfortunately we've run out of upgrades for that sort of thing. Um, which is a shame, because if we, there were update upgrades left, we'd be able to keep the science running a bit longer. Um, but anyway, we go over to the rail stuff, to, just to sort of even out our supplies, because of course we used a couple of bits of rail to set up the, the siding. Um, and I find that uh, everything's running at full pelt again, nearly, because the, well, the limit, limiting factor at the moment is stone, because uh, now that we're in update 0.11.17, um, the stack size of rails has been changed from 50 to 100, so suddenly the factory has twice as much stuff still to do, and actually, if if um, I'd set that up in this update, I probably would have um, not had some, I would have like had half the chest that I have. But anyway, we've hopped on board the train and it's actually gone the other way this time, which is really cool. I don't know whether it's actually like the, the quickest way to like loop around the entire loop rather than going back and forth on one section of it, or whether it was just like the particular situation with all the trains on the line at the time. But that is very cool that the, the train did that. Um, anyway, we're going to finish up connecting all these. Now that we've got efficiency modules in them all, I'm going to have them all running. Um, so we just sort out a little merge point here, and that'll all be fine. So uh, what we'll also do is put in some blue belts, because of course it was already full before um, when we didn't have all the mining drills running. Now that we do we want to be able to supply a bit faster, we want, we, we want the thing to be going as quickly as it can, really. Um, so we also put in some blue belts in that bit, and just try and get it so that everything can run down everywhere. And that works out quite well, everything runs down, so we're all good there. So we've actually used up our entire supply of blue belts there, we've got not a single one left. Um, so now we'll set up the guns, we've got um, like the four of them in, in sort of the corners of the outpost, and then we'll also get some uh, laser turrets as well, just to sort of supplement those. It's I can't put them as far out as the other ones, because I've kept, I've been sort of quite efficient with the um, with the power grid, and we'll also put a couple down by the, the train loading area. Clear away a couple of trains, doesn't look like the train is immediately coming, so we're just going to walk off. And um, I donned the power suit, so we can get a bit of speed up, and I made our way over to Copper Outpost 3 because um, as I was passing it a minute ago, I discovered that a bunch of the mine drills have run out, quite a surprising number of them. And of course, the, the circuit outpost is going to be um, hoovering up copper quite rapidly, so I guess that's not that much of a surprise. It's the the, the main, like, whatever you call it, the main consumer of, of uh, copper at the moment. So what I decided to do is set up a, another, um, well, set up all the remaining mi uh, mining drills, because of course we want to keep things running quickly and um, Previously the belts were completely filled and uh, they aren't anymore, so clearly we do need to um, add in some more stuff there. So I'm working out the spacing. It comes out not perfect, because uh, the way I've set this outpost up is that there's a, the, everything goes down the middle of the outpost, so I have to line things up in a certain way, which means that stuff on one side is, is better supplied than the other. And also we may get an issue in future where like there's a, a bit of lopsidedness with the belt, because of course um, with this section at the top there's like five mine drills on one side and like seven on the other or something like that. It might be six, I don't know. I think it is seven, it might even be eight. Um, so we get that connected up, we get some more blue belts. The only thing is, uh, because we don't have any blue belts um, handy, we've had to take them off other bits of the system. There aren't that many blue belts around. Uh, we do have enough efficiency modules to resupply things, because of course uh, we resupplied um, earlier. And also we, we deconstructed some mining drills before we built these ones, so we could use the efficiency modules from those. So I'm going to work out um, a nice evening out section here, because the, the old infrastructure that was here is... Um, no longer in existence, and it makes more sense to just put a nice corner um, belt balancer. But we have a bit of an issue where I use up like all of the blue belts on the on the loading area, which is terrible. So we, um, we I've used an underground belt there to sort of uh, steal a few blue belts from another bit, but still it's not quite perfect, and it's causing a bit of an issue uh, with the copper and loading. It could be running faster, and that's no good. So we hop on board the, the copper train that's parked up, and we're going to make our way back over to the main base. We're going to jump out as it goes past them. Um, uh, the main bit, and then we're going to go over and get resupplied um, on blue belts so that we can go and finish off our work there. So we do that, and everything looks fine there. Um, we can, if, if we so wish, make our uh, way straight back. And what I try and do is hop on board a passing train, and it's this one. There we go. And I think this is, yeah, this is the train to um, to Copper Outpost 3. I'm quite proud of that. I didn't even get myself injured from hopping on board that. I sort of ran at it and hopped on. Uh, so anyway, we'll put in those blue belts, and that's pretty much all we need there, but we do want to. Um, uh, just get rid of that mining drill that's there, and probably also put in a couple more um, bits of weaponry, uh, seeing as we've extended the outpost up further. Um, there's now the, like an undefended bit. It's unlikely that any bikes are going to get this far, honestly, because there's quite a few other things that they, they can go past. 
um, that will keep them nicely occupied. But it's a good idea to keep the defences up anyway, just in case that should happen. So with that done, um, we'll make our way back over to the main base. I've just missed the train, so I decided to walk instead. Um, and we'll just get back that way, going past the copper outpost too there. I don't know if I'm going to deconstruct that or not. There is a stone outpost there. If one day I actually need to import stone, um, that might be a good place to start. It's not too far away. But there are a lot of stone deposits around, so I don't know how um, necessary it will be. Anyway, we go over and check on the oil stuff, seeing as that's sort of the, the nearest stuff to, to where we arrive back. I also sort out the, the coal loading, because... Uh, um, I don't know, there was a weird bit of belt stuff going on. And I find out that actually this substation over here is not connected to the system. I don't know how this has happened, but for whatever reason the, the, the coal system has not been connected to anything. Anyway, we're having an attack over in Copper Outpost 1. Something's been destroyed um, and uh, there's been a bit of destruction there. I, I spotted um, some more biters running in, sort of a second wave, and they came from actually inside the radar range, which is interesting. They sort of cut across um, my radar square diagonally, which is a bit strange. But anyway, after a quick checkup of um, the oil system, so we don't have to come back here later, I start to make my way over to um, to the main base so I can find a train to hop on board that can take me over to Copper Outpost 1. And conveniently, uh, the, the uh, very specific train for that has turned up just, uh, just as I have, so we'll hop straight on, make our way over and see what the, the damage is. There was only one or two things destroyed, and when I get there I find out it was the two uh, laser turrets that were guarding the, the train, the, like the main station bit. So I've put in four there to help supplement that, um, and that should all run fine. And then we'll add in a couple more bits of weaponry in, in the um, into the, the main walled bit just to help with that. Um, one of the mine drills has run down, run, uh, run out, run down. I don't know. Um, so we deconstruct that, and then we're going to put in. Um, well, what we're going to do is we're going to cut back on the base a bit because we want to keep it nice and compressed. The the smaller the area, the more overlap you have between the different turret uh, ranges, and it makes it a lot easier to, to deal with any. Um, attacking biters, so we'll just uh, set up a couple of extra turrets around the place to make sure that's all fine. And then I just missed the train because I, I I hesitated for a second. I was wondering if I should hang around and deal with some biters, but I decided that I would do that some other time. And um, unfortunately missed the train in the time it took to decide that. So we're just going to walk back and I'll be fine. Um, some big coal deposits just by the side of here. I wonder if we're ever going to get to use those because um, our coal deposit is slowly running out by the oil base, and uh, once it finally does, we'll. Um, we'll need to build a, a, an actual proper iron outpost. I mean, copper outpost somewhere. We have iron outposts. Anyway, we're over in circuits, and I'm not really happy with them. It's not looking brilliant. Um, stuff's not backed up anywhere, and that's a very bad sign in general for the system. Um, and also, only like half of the the, um, the circuit assembly is reliably functioning. And I think, um, as well as it being like not qu not quite enough in the way of copper ore. I think there's also the factor of we don't have enough smelting going on. I think I I sort of miscalculated how much smelting is needed to keep this factory running. I mean, I didn't calculate it at all, I just did it by uh, by eye, really, so it's not surprising. But just as we're working on that, we get another attack, and this one's much worse. You can see the numbers in the 30s there of things that have been destroyed, because it's um, Oil Outpost 3. I never built any defences there, I completely forgot, so it's entirely unguarded, and the biters are having free reign over that. So we, we've hop on, hopped on board the circuit train to go and uh, get over to a spare train as quickly as possible. We send it to oil 3 and it has no path. And that's a very, very bad sign. That suggests that they've actually blown up uh, portions of the rail and it, it means that we don't have a path to oil 3 anymore. So I have to send the train over to um, copper outpost 4. And when we arrive there, I switch to manual mode and drive the rest of the way uh, myself so we can find out what is going on over here. So, yep, there's some destroyed rail and destroyed pretty much everything else as well. There's just it, like ghost images everywhere. And here's the biters. Um, for a moment I forgot that they were probably still here and they took me by surprise but I dealt with them fairly uh, well with uh, with my shotgun. And now it's time to work on rebuilding. Um, which is going to be a bit difficult because it, mean, it means crafting millions of, uh, of pump jacks which take an age to produce. Um, but we'll, we'll, we'll just get on with it. Uh, we'll put in the, the rail bits again so we can get uh, that bit running. And I'd hop on board the train, move it up around to this other bit so that there's room for the oil train to turn up. And if it does, then I can, like, send my train away. Or I guess send it back to oil 3 and it'll get out of the way of the, the other train and let it pass. Anyway, we start putting in the bits again. We've put in some pump jacks and we've also got some uh, some uh, pipes being crafted. And then there's another attack over in Iron Outpost 2. And it's getting really annoying now. They just keep attacking all my outposts. I don't know what's going on. Uh, whether they're particularly angry or they're just, like... Um, trying to colonize new places all of a sudden. 
Um, and I think that is what happened with this particular attack, because the, the biters stopped once they arrived, and that's what they do usually uh, when they plan to build a base. If they're, if they're just attacking me because I'm angering them, then they would make their way um, over to like the next outpost and carry on with the destruction, I think. Um, what I think it is is that there's a little um, there's a little biter base um, on an island, or I, I don't know if it is, it is an island, but an area um, just a bit north of... Uh, of oil three, and I think what happened is the biters decided um, where to um, uh, where to colonize uh, based on a, um, how the crow flies, rather than the actual distance required to travel. Um, anyway, what you saw there is I just set up um, uh, the uh, the station uh, for the resupply train, the help station, um, because I've run out of supplies and I need a few more to build all the pump jacks I need. So um, that train should hop along in a moment, and we can uh, resupply from it to. Um, get the last bits of the outpost done except it doesn't seem to be turning up and I'm I'm wondering why and I, I, I suspect that maybe something's gone wrong with that so we'll have to uh, go and investigate see why the train hasn't turned up um, and in the meantime we'll finish off with the last little bits of work um, and then we'll just go back resupply get um, some extra pump jacks and then when we come back we can set up some defenses as well um, and that'll all be fine so there's a couple more little bits of pipe to put in and annoyingly, this, they destroyed an odd number of underground pipes, so I've now, I'm now going to have like one underground pipe in my inventory all the time, unless I dump it somewhere. I hate it when that happens. Uh, but anyway, uh, I'm doing a quick check of the station, wondering what's going on, and I just deconstruct to the help station in the end, um, so we can get back to, um, to other things. Don't want the, the, the train to turn up later on, uh, when we're not over there anymore. Anyway, we take the train down to uh, the main base, and I encounter an issue. There's a, a gridlock, and a very interesting one. Oil Train 3 is facing backwards on the line, and of course everything else has had to stop for it. Um, and I guess what's happened is, uh, when the the rails to uh, Oil Outpost 3 um, got destroyed, um, this train was on its way there, um, and no longer had a path it could take, so it just sort of... Um, shut down control and rolled to a halt, which unfortunately involved it going um, onto the wrong side of the tracks and blocking everything else. Um, so we've fixed that now, of course, with the with the things reconnected, we just had to move the train out of the way and then send it in the correct direction, and everything's cleared up there. And that explains what happened to the help train, because um, that was caught in that gridlock. Anyway, we've had yet another um, attack in Copper Outpost 1, so that that's annoying. I'm not even going to bother going there immediately, I've got other stuff to work on. Uh, but yeah, anyway, the, the help train does work because the fact that it was in the gridlock shows that it had set off, uh, meaning that it had, it had recognised that the, the help station was uh, present and, and gone to sort it out. So when we hop on board the, the remaining spare train, we have, of course, one of them has now gone into, um, what do you call it, into, uh, <clears throat> into uh, Copper Outpost 4. Um, so we've taken this one, and interestingly, this one has um, gone anti-clockwise around the loop this time even though it comes from basically the same location as the other train, Copper 2. So I don't know whether that, that like, going uh, anti-clockwise, or no, wait. Going clockwise around the loop was a normal thing for... Oh, then again, this is the oil outpost, so I guess it, it would be going this way around it. But anyway, well, let, let's um, sort out the, the, the outpost. So I'm just crafting uh, the two pump jacks, and then everything will be fixed again. Everything else looks to be fine. Um, and as far as I know, there's nothing else missing. There may be a couple of um, barrels missing now, I think about it, but um, I don't think it's too much of an issue. If they were missing, it was because um, the train wasn't hanging around long enough to be loaded with them anyway, so it doesn't actually matter uh, that much. So we're going to set up some defences now, so I've set up a couple of bits on that little side um, deposit there, and then we'll set up quite a few around the place on the, the, main, uh, the main pump jack area, because we don't want this to happen again. We want to make sure that we can uh, defend against any future attacks, so we'll, we'll put in a couple... Of uh, both kind of turrets around the place, just in case they like they can knock out the the power later. Um, and because of like because of the reason that I think the the attack was for, I think there are going to be more attacks. There are going to be more biters that are coming from like right across the lake, um, just to try and settle on that one particular patch. Um, unfortunately, unless we go out there on a, on a big long journey and deal with the one base that's out there. So anyway, I hop on board the copper train and I accidentally get my, myself hit by the train. You can't manage the. Um, the maneuver every time, and also with it going horizontally, it might be a bit more fiddly. I don't know. Um, but we we hop off as well and manage to injure ourselves there um, as well. But that's fine. And we make our way over to um, Copper Outpost One, so we can sort out the the um, the most recent attack. So we'll put in um, even more um, 
turrets. I also moved some back from the walls because I know that the biters can reach over the walls sometimes. I don't know if they're getting to the walls, but in case they are, it's a good idea to have things step back by square. Um, I actually missed that one of the, the turrets was damaged there because it was sort of hidden. It was like disguised against a belt, so I guess we'll we'll go back there and sort that out some other time. But we're going to make our way back over to the main base now and finish up the episode. Not sure what we're going to do next episode. Probably uh, we'll, we'll finish off what we're doing with Circus because we got distracted there. But anyway, I shall say goodbye. Thank you for watching, and I shall see you next time.